Charlie. Good boy. Good boy. Keep going. Run. That dog has way too much energy. Wish somehow I could get him to run a weed eater or something. Uh, yeah, I'm out here walking the boys. Um, it's kind of cold out right now in Florida. It was only 40 when we got up. But uh, today I was trying to find an old article that I had come on my phone on the feed. It was a mainstream media type. And that article has disappeared. And I, I don't know why. Well, I have my suspicions. Somebody in mainstream media had the audacity to write an article that talked about how old ancient farming techniques, how they preserve the living soil, the microbes in the, in the soil. And a, a, a cofactor of that is they compared it to a farm next door where they're doing no-till GMO. Now here's where you can understand why an article might disappear. Think about the power and the money behind GMO. You're talking big companies. Now all I'm saying is speculation. I have to be careful, you know, because that article disappearing shows you what kind of clout these folks have. But anyway, in part of it, they compared percolation how very little rainfall on the no-till GMO side of a neighboring farm adjacent and the water was running off. Well, when water runs off, it's less available for that area for the plants and it can wash away nutrients on the top layer. And the percentages were phenomenal. Like they didn't put it in percentage but it would be thousands of percent more uh, of water that on the old farming techniques stayed in place that, that was able to perk and stay in that soil. So that goes hand in hand with what I've been doing. Um, well, I mean, the taller cut and everything, you can't really cross that over to agricultural, but with the thatch dethatching and, and everything, the organic entrainment into the soil turning it a little bit um I, and I was actually surprised at the at how well that did here in florida because i thought it would be more of a wash i thought that for the gain that you might get by increasing the water availability uh the bioavailability of the of the rainfall because you've opened up the thatch that it would be negated somewhat here because our soil being a lot sandy having mica and silica that that counter that reflective radiation would would quell the the benefits of of the dethatch but i didn't see that happen and i saw less areas that were just sandy you know that were just like sugar sand if you ever rode four wheelers you know what that's like where that sand gets separated and you have um like particle size so then it's shifting and you know things like uh, uh flour and talc powder and everything you can stick your finger right down through the reason that that material is so floaty uh is because of particle size distribution i'm kind of seeing the opposite when you do the when you get that organic entrainment that you get with the processing with the thatching and the raking but the only reason I just, I didn't even do it for those reasons. I did it because I wanted to get some of this preseason money where all the other guys are going out there and they just mow it a little lower, mow it a little lower, mow it a little lower, you know, and to get money. Well, I was missing out on a lot of money and I couldn't figure out a way to get into that. And, you know, it's more than just the money. It's just you, you miss out on accounts because... If you're not in early, then they find somebody else. But by doing this process though too, of the dethatch raking and the, uh, so you can almost see the line still here. And I haven't mowed this or anything for almost, uh, it's faint, I'll, I'll admit. But that's actually a good thing because you don't want them super defined stripes that last forever because they won't call you back forever. But either way, my the density that I'm getting here and everything 
because of my insistence on finding another way to show the delta or difference between pull up and drop gate to when I leave, other than evenness across the horizontal plane, because of my insistence on finding another way that 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 comports with my values on organic mowing, which like the doctor's Hippocratic oath, uh, above all, you don't do harm. Um, and in, with where it applies here is you don't harm the microbes. The microbes balance the nitrogen and prevent red tide, amongst other things. They provide natural fertilizer and they keep that soil so it is moisture absorbent. So by doing that, I found a way to get into the early season money to nail down accounts that were passing me by because I would refuse to mow for a scraggly weed here, a scraggly weed there, and burn down the lawn and uh, and fool the eye because I don't care about evenness across the horizontal plane. That'll come later. What you care about more is evenness when you look down into the lawn. Now, a lot of this is dormant and this is natural selection. So the nice thing about natural selection, not to go off on a tangent, is you have staggered dormancy. Staggered dormancy helps preserve the microbes too because then you don't have everything uh, losing canopy at the same time and it helps to continue that shading. Even though we have cooler weather, our hot days are hot enough that you can't build the house after the company arrives, our company being the microbes. So you have to have the house built before you're not going to have a long travel time between the arrival. Once these microbes come out of and become more active than or want to, there's not going to be time enough to build up the canopy to protect them from the, the heat of the days that we already have. So my perspective is getting evenness as you look into the lawn down on the vertical plane, skip the horizontal plane quantification of quality, and that'll come later once you have the peer pressure that'll hold that lawn grasses in place for a good even cutting now that being said mine don't look horrible across the horizontal plane but i'm trying to tell my people hey don't look for that allow uh the expression of nature allow the anomalous grass or plant sometimes it's a weed sometimes it's a weed but it's also one that supports cross uh, pollinators like bees and monarch butterflies and things like that so you know um this this uh concept of you know if it's if there's one blade that's taller than the rest then we got to get out there and cut everything lower and put every lawn on a life support system and the resources it needs are the resources that human needs and we don't have enough of already another example is this lawn next door it looks beautiful right yeah but the problem is, if you look really close, it's mowed way too low for the type of lawn grasses it has. Everybody wants to treat Florida lawns like turf grass. It can't be done. You just don't have the nutrient layer. You don't have the, uh, you have the too intense of a sun. And another thing is the guy over there, he waters this. So right after he mows, he'll go watering. The problem with watering here in Florida is with the population we got, you're washing out you're destroying the filter it for every gallon of water you're pulling from the aquifer you're increasing the salinity of the water that's in you're brining it up the filters becoming decimated because of overuse the water is coming through so fast now that it doesn't separate the um the salt water from the the other as well as it did um, you're polluting the food supply too because then there's less water that's available for food crop production and then you lean to using GMO foods. And that goes back to what I first started talking about, about how this guy wrote this article, bashing GMO. I'll bet he don't even have a job anymore because those people are so in bed together. In fact, you might be surprised at who might be bedfellows in this scenario. You might have bedfellows. They probably use the same testing facilities. And here is speculation only, but would you be surprised that that the big food companies don't have some kind of coordination or coalition with big pharma? If their food 
is designed to make you sick, but satiate their hunger hormone ghrelin so that they don't be perceived as administration in power when people were starving, even though they actually are starving because the food they're eating is toxic and not genetically recognized by the body, causes massive inflammation as the body tries to parse out anything usable in it. Would you think that might be a hell of a connection to make? That they work hand in hand. That you eat their food and now a, a different derivative or subsidiary or cooperating partner now gets to sell you drugs to keep you alive for the rest of your life. Now think on and see down the line who else might be bedfellows. Do you think these green lawn chemical companies that have chemicals that have a 50,000 year half-life, they don't decompose for 50,000 years, even half of it. And then you put different chemicals on there and then you got a matrix of chemistry that nobody has the ability to forecast or predict. And then the lawn guy comes through thinking he's doing a great job for the customer, running an edger blade and getting all that chemical soup and dirt mixed up in the air and settling on his skin, his sweaty skin. And you know what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be ironic if those folks have figured out a way to pair up and knowing you know that their chemicals will make you sick but then their their friend in at least if not co-owner or whatever in the big pharma now he gets to sell you drugs the rest of your life to keep you halfway alive you know what i'm saying so you know that's the the downfall and and unfortunately i'm seeing it as I go out mowing one chemical company truck after another, you know, something green and then this one and then everybody is just falling for this hook, line and sinker of a chemical to fix this and a chemical to fix what the first chemical effed up all the way down the line till the last chemical they need is embalming fluid. And it's, it's just unfortunate because they don't even know what they're polluting and toxifying for generations. It's just as bad as the people that mow their grass real low and strip mine it basically because you don't have any organics left. It takes years for that to be recreated. And, and you're killing the living soil just for a little bit of cash and taking that away from the next generation. Not in cuttings, not in something as benign as a 40, $50 mow but in the ability to have good quality food clean air and fresh water and that's disgusting that somebody would trade that for a little bit of money and take it from generations to come i would like to know people are basically strip mining the planet right now with these zero turn mowers because they have no clue or care what they're doing to the uh uh I know it's, it's less a lawn than it is their home, the microbes. It's less your lawn, actually, than it is their home. They've been there for a lot longer, and they do a lot more for you. This is even less lawn, less to be perceived as lawn, and more should be perceived as an ecosystem. And people are going out there and destroying it. And I've seen lawns just this past week that literally can't be more than a quarter inch high and most of them are turned to dirt and people say well that's the way we did it up north and you know well yeah there you're leaning on a, a long-standing resource of a nutrient layer that's eight feet deep or four feet deep but it doesn't change the fact that the laws of physics still apply that now opens that land to uh wind and water erosion and it wastes something that was not yours to take it was there for future generations called living soil so i don't know i just don't understand this mentality of where that's okay at all and i've tried to talk to people about it and they either don't care or they don't believe it but i've seen it i know what happens to these lawns and what people also don't understand is that's where florida's super important we can have the end the end game where we have a sahara type landscape or where we have a tropical rainforest it's almost like a perfect proving ground because the the consequences of bad behavior on these lawns which are more expansive than ever with more people moving in 
and more places being mowed that would have been left go without the use of easy mowing processes and equipment, it shows more right away than other places would where they're leaning on a, on a re resource, but they're depleting it. We're, we're running out of living soil. That's been in the news here recently. Um, and it just seems like nobody cares. I fight every day. I lose customers almost every day because I won't mow it to their perspective of, you know, just mow it lower. They think I'm some kind of ignoramus because here I am mowing and even doing a cross pattern to try to catch these stragglers and weeds and stuff. And, and sometimes cross patterns doesn't matter. Weeds are structured where they escape the mower deck. It just, that's the way they are. Their, their stalk is designed differently. The way that they even grow is designed differently where that's possible. Um, if your whole stem and everything is straight up and down, it's harder. And that's the type of plants we want to support. But when you cut low to get these weeds who grow like this and then up, which makes it very easy for them to deflect out of the way, then you're wiping out all the competition for resources to those weeds. And then the weeds proliferate and they do nothing beneficial. They don't recontribute to the soil. They don't recontribute through cellulose to the fossil fuel layer. They don't sequester carbon dioxide and convert to oxygen. They don't sequester solar radiation, convert to cellulose for future fertilizer. They don't do anything, okay? But most people here, that's what they'll mow to. They'll mow it to the weeds. But here I stand, and then they think, oh, we mow it low, we won't have to mow it very often. I'm standing on a property, I don't think I mowed this for over a month. Granted, there's some dormancy issues, but even with the dethatch to stimulate growth, I don't, I don't remember the last time I mowed this place. So I can prove it over and over. I have some that I only mow once a month through the season. And they don't appear to need to be cut because even though they're variegated species through natural selection, they are also, generally speaking, the same nature of plant because I've insisted on a certain canopy. So they had to be. And then, as a consequence, they have something of a homogeneous growth weight rate that makes it appear that it doesn't need cut, even if it could use a cut. So, but with every lawn that gets mowed short, it's literally every week, if not more often. I've driven past some lawns where the customer insisted it had to be cut short, and the next day, the weeds were popping out like, Oh, great. Now we got a chance to take canopy because the canopy that the good plants had is now gone as is three quarters of the body of the good plants. So this ignorance is just, it's cross board. It, and it's, it's getting bad here in Florida. Uh, we're going to run out of resources. And the planet and the, the, the ecology, the uh, environment, it's going to run out of patience for us too because it has its own way of defending itself it releases neurotoxins and it releases 40 times higher allergen protein load um, plants can talk and communicate it's been reported the plants out here are very much akin to the plants within your body that help with the conversion of nutrients from food through the digestion process do you think they're going to be bed? Do you think that those plants out here that you're mowing low all the time, do you think they're going to tell their buddies that are inside of you? Gr granted, before you think I'm nuts, realize they've recorded plants talking to each other. All right, look it up. Do you think those plants out here that are being cut low by you are going to tell their buddies that are inside your body that are, that are what's keeping you alive? that are more of the DNA that, uh, than the DNA that is human that's in you. Do you think they're gonna tell their buddies to be supportive of your body that's doing them harm? You know, I think it's a little bit uh, crazy. Not what I'm saying, what y'all are thinking if you're the ones that are going out there cutting this stuff super low. And I just had an acquaintance that passed away from COPD, from breathing in all the dust from low cutting all the time 
All right, I got to get to work. Y'all have a good day.